This is a city of contradictions. And right in the downtown core, affluence and addiction have adjacent postal codes. Good evening from the heart of Vancouver, a place that's become the epicenter of the opioid crisis, now crippling communities across this country. Last year alone, more than 4,500 Canadians died from opioid addiction. To put it into perspective, that's a death every two hours. With an election less than a week away here in B.C., a growing and desperate population isn't interested in any political promises. Every day is simply a struggle to survive. East Hastings, Vancouver's downtown east side. This is not a campaign stop. You won't find leaders shaking these hands. These people probably don't have voting cards. Probably not. Good chance to know. You know, they're just, they're just trying to survive each day. Every, every minute, every hour, each, every day. They probably have no idea who, who, who's running. Or in most cases, even what day it is. James Harry, though, knows every inch of this neighborhood and almost every addict. He was one. What was your drug of choice? It was crack cocaine. When, how bad did it get for you? Uh, it got, it took over my life. It destroyed, this destroyed everything I had. Look at this, though. Yeah. I mean, this is the kind of situation here. This is that, actually, this is actually one of my, one of my hangouts. This, this doorstep yeah, this right door, here. Yeah. Like what? A doorstep 1,400 kilometers from his home in Heisla First Nation. Five years sober, he's now the driving force behind an outreach program here. Here I am. Here you are. How's it going? I'm all right. Yeah. Designed to save others from his own community. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Hey, how's life? Oh, he's pay, played a big role. Uh, like he's, he's, he's actually saved my life. Because like if, if it wasn't for James right now, I wouldn't be like I wouldn't be on this planet. Since the last election, nearly 13,000 Canadians have died of opioid overdose. A disproportionate number here, especially, are Indigenous. It's never been declared a national public health emergency. Our people are dying. People are dying down here, you know, and uh, if, that, if, that, if that's not a, a pu public health emergency, I don't know what is. What would it, what difference would it make if they declared it a public health emergency? You know, I, I, I think, you know, to bring, bring more awareness, bring more awareness of what's, what's happening down here and how, and, the, and what, are, what, what people are going through down here, right? More, more. More, more outreach. It's not as if the issue has been ignored. It means immediately declaring a public health emergency, stopping the criminalization of people who are dealing with addiction. The debate on how to deal with it, though, has turned a life and death issue into just one more negative campaign tactic. Decriminalization is something that the Liberals are pursuing and contemplating. I can assure you that our party is not. Thank you. I think we've seen that the Conservative Party is continuing to mislead uh, and even lie to Canadians. We have been very clear we will not be legalizing hard drugs. I mean, this must be nothing for you. Every day, every day, it's constant. Constant, and now it's worse. Street drugs consistently laced with fentanyl. The Liberals want to expand access to supervised safe injection sites the Conservatives don't. James Harry sees both sides. So in a sense, it works. But also, in a sense, it prolongs, it prolongs rock bottom. Do you need the government to do more? I'd say, come, come, come take a walk with me. Any of you leaders out there, come take a walk with me. Come see, come see what's happening down here. You know, our people are, our people, our people are hurting. And that is an understatement. My thanks to James Harry for being such a trusted guide.